So recommended reading. Um, these are uh, some of these are one concept books, but uh, they're good concepts. Uh, the world is flat. If you haven't read that, um, it's a good concept repeated over and over. Uh, Wikonomics was a little old now, but it talks about the Wikipedia, which I find fascinating. Um, the Long Tail. That was another one. Starfish and the Spider. It talks about how organizations um, now are more like starfish, where you lop off one arm of it, it can grow back. Old organizations are like a spider. If you lop off the main head of the leg, it doesn't grow back, and if you lop off the head, it's all done. Um, Nine Shift was the book I talked about. Uh, the Brazen Careerist, if you want a career guide that anybody over the age of 40 will like, what? She's recommending you do what Penelope Trunk. She's kind of out there, um, like she says, you know, like things like she recommends kids go take off a year and go live in Thailand. You know, I mean, she's definitely very different advice than what I would have given people five years ago, but she's not that far off the mark. Now, uh, Generation Me uh, was written from a, someone younger's point of view, and it was it's definitely helpful. There's a new book coming out for business at Me 2.0 by Dan Schauble. Uh That's a very good book about personal branding and how um, the Internet has changed how people look for jobs and, and do their careers. So I do review tons of these type of books at uh, topshelf.odcom.com, which is, um, so there'll be a whole bunch on there, some of my top picks on there uh, for, for business books. So that's it. And you can follow me at Twitter <laughs> at, at Downtown Woman. And so. <laughs> Um, collaborate, don't delegate. Well, you said delegating. <laughs> yeah. So we have to relearn all our skills? Well, you don't delegate to each other. You probably collaborate at a high level, but you need to ask them. You know, there's, there's a whole culture you know, that we grew up with. Right. And, like, in, in, in another world, literally. Yeah. And the whole generation grew up in another world, literally. Right. And, and from what I'm well, thinking, is there... It is. Well, all right. Well, I would also argue a Gen Yer needs to learn to communicate the way the boomers do because they're still in power. So, I mean, there was an interesting um, political thing where someone was saying, the boomers were saying, well, the Gen Y is apathetic about this whole thing because what, they're going to do something on Facebook? They're not marching on Washington. They're not standing out from the gate. It's like, well, just because we're doing something differently doesn't mean we're not doing something. So I think you have to recognize that, well, they might be, and they accomplished, we, you know, the Internet accomplished a whole lot to help the new administration. But I think you have to step back from what you have learned and realize this group is coming with a knowledge set that you need. And so it may equal what you have. I mean, there's nothing to separate experience, you know, but if they can get you there quicker, you need to figure it out. Yep. Right. And then, and this is the first time in my career. I used to be the sign fire the news, did a lot of film and sound business because we'd like right. to do five years in advance. And this is the first time in history we've ever seen a parent of a child from other school. This has never happened before in the United States, ever. Yeah. And, and I think that this is driving a lot of this because whether or not I work with you, you see something in me, you see it in me. So if I'm saying, I think this is a good idea, right. if you're kind of listening in a different way than you but we also have, an <laughs> I'm actually, uh, I, I go back and forth, and I don't think the um, Gilmore Girls style of mom's best friend with a daughter is a good thing. And I, well, I'm amazed when my friend said, I asked my, no, but she goes, I know, but she goes, well, one of my friends asked her daughter, well, should I move to, back to Massachusetts? It's like, she's eight. Don't put that pressure. I mean, I think this asking the kids' opinions, but see, they're being asked their opinions from a young age and having a say. So to put them in the office where all of a sudden you don't have any say anymore while they're parents and I actually have not, I have asked every HR person I've talked to, uh, they have all received a call from a parent. They have all received a call from a parent. And it's just so, so I, you know, that I can't even comprehend how I would handle that call. But, um, you know, um, it's like, do you want to raise Mrs. Baumgartner? I don't know, but uh, it's just, it, it's a different world. There is a problem. It's weird, though, because I mean, we're, we're, we like to work. I mean, we're generating the work. Right, I agree with that. But there's no, but there's also no order when the mom dresses like the daughter and they shop at the same clothes. There's no division between authority. There's no authority, and you cannot run a country without some authority. We could try. You can argue that's a whole different conversation. But this is a whole different. It's an interesting dialogue. I'm glad we're talking about it because you know it is. But that's why the clash comes in. If you have a command and control, and you have people who are used to 
being this way, how it's going to evolve will be interesting. It's, it's kind of like watching China, how they're going to evolve their system. I mean, it's, 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 we're blending old and new and who wins in certain things. And it's an interesting place. When we did a survey between the baby boomer women and the Gen Y, the baby boomer women like, I didn't want to talk to them until they earned their dues. You know, I mean, they haven't been here long enough to have an opinion. That was the comments that were coming back. Well, I'm just saying, these are what people wrote in, 800 women wrote in, and I would say the majority of the boomers said, they don't give me the respect I deserve because of the years I put in. You know. Oh, sure, they think Bill Gates is ancient. <laughs> they think Bill Gates, no, just kidding. <laughs> if you don't, if they're not talked down to, I would say anybody's willing to learn from anybody. I think they don't see. I see a difference. I, I see you're an old fart. I just think sometimes we're, I think you're speaking about the same things, it's just different language. Like when all those women came back and said, they don't respect what I've done, the young women said, well, of course we do. We just don't have to say it every day. Uh, we wouldn't be coming them to asking them to mentor us if we didn't respect, but they didn't want, they were too busy to mentor. I, I don't have time for them because they don't respect me. Yet they're coming to you to ask you to mentor, yet you see that as not a lack of respect. So I think we're all saying the same thing. We're just saying it differently. It, I mean, it's a tough in the workplace. We have four generations in the workplace now. So, and that has never happened before. It's a very different generation in a workplace. So, it's very challenging. I hope I provided some insight. This is some great dialogue. But thank you all for showing up, Alan. <laughs> you know, so, this is excellent.